Welcome to the Bob Balance Health Cast. This is episode number 285, Men, the Physical Signs of Testosterone Deficiency. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about positive aging. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Dr. Maupin and Brett are the authors of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about hormone replacement therapy for women, which is available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at BioBalance Health. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. In this health guest, we're going to be talking about the physical signs of the loss of testosterone or the development of what we call testosterone deficiency in men. We've been doing a series of health casts on various uh, hormonal losses that occur as, as a natural part of the aging process. And medicine has reached a point now where that can be identified and stopped or delayed pretty significantly with pretty significant health benefit gains. If you are aware, if you know, if your doctor knows, and it's something that you decide you want to try. In, in the book that we've written called The Secret Female Hormone, we explain all of this. But today we want to aim our conversation particularly towards men to make men aware that there are physiological signs that are visible of the deterioration of their testosterone limit as they age. And we want to remind them that testosterone is the, the first step in the aging cascade. And so- Testosterone it, loss. T- testosterone the loss, loss yes, thank you. Uh, as you begin to lose this testosterone, the guardians of your health in your body, the hormone system, begin to weaken, decline, and break. And there are things that can be done to prevent that so that you stay healthier longer mm-hmm. and have a better quality of life as you age. That's, that's absolutely true, and that's our goal. Our goal is right. to let everyone know how they can prevent being sick as they age. Uh-huh. So one of the things that testosterone does that helps me like walk around in crowds and know who, what man needs testosterone, what, what it does is it stimulates another hormone called melanin. Melanin gives us our skin color, like tan, any, you know, whatever skin color you were, meaning easily tanned, not easily tanned, but, but maintaining that skin color that you're born with. So t- melanin is the hormone, but stimulated by testosterone to so give like you your skin color. Testosterone is the gas that goes in the tank, and then the tank produces the melanin. Right. That's but right. But without the testosterone, the tank's empty. And right. No- the melanin is produced at a very low level. Right. So, so when, I'm, when I'm looking at a patient or... At, when I can't help the, the uh, looking at everyone, uh, I'm, I see first see on a male whether they look pale, like pale, like pasty pale, not to white see that, think pale. Heart attack. And 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 I'm not saying that that's the only reason you can be pale. Okay. I'm, but but it is one of the signs that needs to be checked. That 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 if you have that and you look in the mirror and you never tan anymore. Or your tan doesn't happen anymore, and you're and you're a guy. You go out in the sun. Is it a you waxy burn. kind of? Uh... No, it's not waxy. It's not really a texture. It's a lack of color. Okay. It is just a lack of color. You've seen. Um, I mean, Bill just Cosby got yeah. whiter as he got older. Even mm-hmm. even people who are African American lose their melanin too sure. when their testosterone goes down. So okay. when I see guys at the gym. Mm-hmm who I've known and who I know what their skin color usually is Mm -hmm. and they're working out. So they should have even more skin color because blood goes to the surface when you're working out and they have no skin color. I think flushed. They're not not flushed. They're not red. They're, they are pale. Um, that usually means to me, they need to see a doctor because they couldn't, they could be having poor blood flow from their heart or from some other blockage that's the most dangerous, or it could be the first sign to me of loss of, of melanin, loss of testosterone. So, so the, you want them to go and check because it could be a heart attack, which yeah, is a much more immediate, much more immediate and, issue. Yes. But don't just stop with checking that. Also check the testosterone. Level. That's right. That's right. Because testosterone does so many more things. This is a, a minor thing that it does, mm-hmm. but it's so obvious if you've followed, um, 
Kiefer Sullivan, so Sutherland. I did that again. <laughs> Sutherland. I mean, I saw him at the um, on the country awards, country country so music awards. Kiefer he, Sutherland as an aging man. I am, and I'm a Donald Sutherland generation. I know. Guy. So I know. Me, I, Kiefer, Kiefer's a pup. Yeah, but they both lost the color in their they face. Yes, they did. And it's not age, that they right? just don't go out in the sun. And I'm showing Kiefer as. A, you know, a young aging guy. We've all yeah, seen him in 24. Right. And so we see him now, you know, he needs right. to check his testosterone. So, so we also, Clint Eastwood's most obvious to me because he is, when, as a young man, he was so hot and he was always kind of a tan color, probably because he lives in California, but um, he now is so pale and he doesn't look like he takes, he uses testosterone, even though he's a great golfer and he's, I mean, he's, still sharp as a tack, he looks like he needs some testosterone. His muscles are getting really thin and he's losing shoulder, shoulder strength. And, but his color, his color is, is decreased. If you look at all the 007 guys as they age, mm -hmm. you know, who takes testosterone? Who, who do you think takes testosterone? I mean, I, I don't know this for a fact. This is just my estimation, but I think I'm sure Pierce Brosnan. Yeah is his skin looks healthy and so so does Sean Connery. Those but two you don't guys think paint. No. No, it's not when they're paint. You can tell if they have makeup on. Right. I don't think it's paint. I mean, it's not that. It's not just a spray tan. It's the I mean, does Donald the, Trump have testosterone? It, can it be orange? No, it can't be orange. I don't know what's wrong or, with Don, uh, Donald John Trump. John Boehner. I don't know what's wrong with either one of them. Okay, I just was, I'm just thinking about what you're. <laughs> I, but but continuing. I'd say Boehner is more obviously losing some testosterone. <laughs> However, there are lots of guys love to in do that government. Too. I know. Sorry. So yeah, well, I'm sure everyone who's listening loves to see you humiliate me <laughs> in, in the uh, we have a opposite views on politics so we have lots of interesting discussions so in any case Roger Moore if you've seen him and yes he is over 70 but he's gotten p more pale as he's gotten older and and it's so it's not just age but it is testosterone causing you to look older that's just one thing, okay? So then, no, and what I was thinking about is you, you've done podcasts about people that come from different regions and different cultural backgrounds, and uh -huh. high Northern European are going to tend to be paler generally. But what you're talking about is a noticeable difference in somebody you know that suddenly looks faded out. The right. the pop has gone. The the life. Has gone from the color. Right. It's of your a lack skin. of blood flow to your skin. Yeah. It's yeah, a no, lack I was of making fun, but being it's so a lack right. of the melanin in your skin. It's a lack of tautness. Yeah. But it's so much easier to see in men because men don't put makeup on. Right. So it's so much easier to just real, visualize real men that. Don't. Most not yeah, most men don't. Yeah. <laughs> so it's easier to see in men. In any case, that's the first thing I look at. If I'm trying to evaluate someone. And the second thing is I look at their shoulders. Now, not everyone has wide shoulders and muscly shoulders, but you usually can tell by their clothes. They don't go out and buy a whole new wardrobe when they lose their deltoid muscles. Yeah. When they lose all of this, mm -hmm. they look like their clothes are falling off. Of them. No the matter shirts, how wealthy. The, the seam drops from the right, shoulder. It, it down drops the, down the, here. Yeah, yeah, and you've got great shoulders. <laughs> I mean, and, and when I first met you, you did not. Really? And that was almost 10 years ago. Huh. So that's, I'm sorry, but. Well, it's not a thing I, I knew. I, you know, so, so I look at their, I look at shoulders and muscle mass and whether their clothes are fitting them. Then I look at waistline. Now you don't have to have a skinny waist to be a guy, but being, and being straight is, is fine. But when you have a little pregnant belly. Yeah. Basketball. Or a basketball. <laughs> God forbid. Um, that's a sign of lack of testosterone because your estrogens are now being, be, when testosterone starts dropping, estrogen goes up. You start getting Culturally man where, breasts and belly fat. Culturally, where I grew up, that was called a beer belly. Okay. Yeah, that's and, true. Arkansas. And you, can, you can look at guys <laughs> standing inside which who are essentially uh, normal weight guys. Mm -hmm. They're not overweight. They're mm -hmm. not obese. Uh, they're not big all over, but they have this poochy belly. Right. And what you're now saying is that's a real clue that they have a testosterone deficiency. That's right. Because testosterone deficiency 
decreases muscle mass that holds you in. Mm-hmm. That's the first thing. It also causes you to have insulin resistance, which then leads to weight gain, belly fat gain, and finally diabetes. Type so two. type two diabetes. So, and the belly fat is yeah. stored inside your abdomen, not under the skin in men. They have the, inside the abdomen, there's this big yellow kind of apron that just brings me back to my medical school anatomy class mm-hmm. that I, it's just, it's just like a cushiony layer of yeah, fat. Yeah, it's it's a and the fatter you are, the thicker it is this way. Is that for insulation? <laughs> it's for I mean, I don't know why we it's do that <laughs> as we age. I don't know what the purpose is. Right. All I maybe it was so we could store energy when we couldn't we no longer had the strength to go out and chase yeah. you know, our food down or or go out and hunt and gather, but it is a storage of energy, but it is also bad for us. It's also a sign testosterone drops, cholesterol goes up, fat increases here. We then become diabetic and sick. I mean, we can stop that. I mean, by taking testosterone or having it replaced to the normal young, healthy level, you can lose that. You you lost it. You lost any belly fat you had. I lost 25 you didn't, pounds. I mean, you didn't look like, Yeah. but you also gained muscle. I mean, I'm using you as an example because you're sitting here in front of the camera, That's but, okay. but you, I mean, you gained, you gained muscle here, you gained muscle here. So that weighs more. Right. So you really lost more fat than just 35 pounds. Well, that's good to hear. So, I mean, cause yeah. you gained the muscle. So, so that's what testosterone will do. And the lack of it looks what we call old. So that's the other thing. So I look at basically muscle mass in the shoulders, which is easy to see. And then belly fat, which is usually easy to see depending on how, how somebody's dressed, depending on how loose their clothing is. Um, I also look for, um, the development of the man boobs, you know, which you can't always see through clothes, but usually, but if somebody sits down, you might be able to see them because they kind of sit on top of here. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's an estrogen problem and a low testosterone problem. And then I look for I look for hips. Sometimes guys who are getting older develop fat around their hips, which they usually don't have when they're, when they're young. So it's more of a female prototype Yeah. because the estrogen's there and it's getting higher all the time. And the testosterone So as men decreased. lose testosterone, they become more androgynous? Yeah. We all become more <laughs> androgynous uh-huh. as we, as we uh, age without hormone replacement. Okay. You've seen older people I have, yeah. who are very old in their right. 90s who look like the opposite sex. It's hard to tell. Yeah. But we also stop doing things like women stop putting makeup on and, you know, men Become stop shaving. Like yeah. <laughs> anyway, in any case, that's mm-hmm. that's kind of one of the next things I look at. Okay. Um, the the lack of testosterone is responsible for hair. We talked about that with right. women. So as men lose their total testosterone or their and their active testosterone as it starts coming down the relationship between testosterone and dihydrotestosterone changes and dihydrotestosterone starts going up testosterone starts going down men start getting back hair yeah it's you'll hear men who are going bald or developing male pattern baldness mm-hmm. start to complain that they didn't used to have hair all over their shoulders and all over mm-hmm. their back but it's like fallen as right. their waist has fallen Mm-hmm, but yeah. it also is all over their back. Yeah. You know, you can usually see when somebody turns around, just like with women and fat, right. men have the, the hairy back. Yeah. They have a lot of dihydrotestosterone and their testosterone itself is decreasing. So that makes them sometimes lose the hair on their legs, right. makes it very smooth. That also can be if you don't have great circulation or it can be because you wear pants all the time that rub the hair off. Right. Okay. So you can see that in younger people for other reasons. But that lack of hair on the legs uh, still have chest hair, but usually starts crawling up here. Yeah. It starts, it starts coming. Come out over the, the, <laughs> their shirt collar yeah. and have a tuft. Right. So, yeah. so that's. That's not good. That's not high. Oh, virile high testosterone. That is the dehydro, dihydrotestosterone increasing above the testosterone. So the fact is, though, when I replace the testosterone, mm-hmm. 
I don't lose the hair. The p- hair on people's backs doesn't go away. Doesn't go away. It's kind of a permanent thing. So you're I still going to have to harvest your back hair. Yeah. If, so once it's laser started, it, yeah. harvest it, something. Yeah. But I also I also look at men's eyebrows because men usually have prominent eyebrows, um, and the, and you know lack of thyroid is just lack of the outer part of your th- of your eyebrow. Right. But if you don't, if your eyebrows have gone away, all of them then that's a lack of testosterone. Eyebrows, not eyelashes. Eyelashes sometimes, but mostly eyebrows. Okay. And then male pattern baldness mm-hmm. means not that you have too much testosterone, that you have not enough testosterone and it's it's lower than your dihydrotestosterone. Oh, when we did the health cast on women, we talked about a window of curability or a window mm-hmm. of treatability. Is there a window for men as well? They, m- There are many men that when I give them testosterone back... They get thicker hair. I mean, you even got darker hair. So your hair got darker. So, and non-cosmetically, and non-cosmetically. So, um, but some you can get more hair, thicker hair. But usually in the areas that are that are temple in your temples, usually for men that doesn't just come back. Yeah. So that's something that would have to be plastic surgically fixed. But the rest, the hair that's still there gets thicker. So in the health cast for women, we also talked about uh, hair loss and uh, vaginal hair loss, uh, mm-hmm. pubic hair loss. Do do men suffer that as well as they as a sign of uh, lost testosterone? Yeah, and we when doctors look at or are examining someone and they're examining and we're examining their pubic area, right. basically, we know whether there is sparse or plentiful hair because that means. There's sparse hair. Usually, that means that they are low of, on testosterone, mm-hmm. and they all they note the size of the penis, the size of the scrotum, that kind of thing, and that's significant because usually, without testosterone, the size of the penis shrinks. If you give testosterone back, it gets bigger. And, so, and the scrotum sh- sh- sort of stretches and falls away from the body. Right. It, the scrotum kind of falls down, gets elongated, kind of right. like women's breasts get elongated. Uh-huh. Men's scrotums get elongated, kind of like. And that's a function of testosterone? That's a function of lack of testosterone. Wow. And because connective tissue uh-huh. is promoted by testosterone, all of our connective tissue holds us up, basically our face well, up, our arms belly. up, our belly in. Right. And the connective tissue also holds the scrotum up. I mean, it's it's skin right. surrounding the testicles, but you'll also notice that as testosterone is not produced anymore, the organs that produce testosterone, our testicles, they get smaller. So if they were this big, then now they're like a bean mm-hmm. because they're not working. Mm-hmm. And everybody, all the guys that come to see me say, oh, my testicles going to get smaller. And I'm like, well, your testosterone is 200 they're probably already as small as they're going to get. So, so they're not going to get reverse worse. If you if you replace testosterone? Nope, that part doesn't that reverse. That part doesn't reverse. Because they, that's a function of the activity of the te- of right. the testes. It's it's the testes making testosterone they get bigger when they do that. But when they're but when I'm replacing it, they don't get any bigger. They're already small. I'm replacing it, they don't have to work anymore. Mm-hmm. So, I'm giving my patient, the testosterone that his own testicle used to, used to give him. And and as an aside, it's important to note that you can't just get a little testosterone. If you get a little testosterone, it turns off your own production. It makes you worse. It makes you worse. And then you just get a little testosterone. So no matter what we do with men, we are going to turn off their production of testosterone and I have to give them enough to replace them back to the normal level. Which is one of the reasons why you contend that pellets is the best way to go. That's right. Because the dosage is so hard to consistently regulate using other delivery mechanisms. That's right. That's right. So you may have, you're not going to get accommodated or or used to the pellets. The pellets, you're going to get a dose. It's going to shut your own system down and replace it within two to four weeks. Then it's going to stay 
pretty even mm -hmm. above the level that you that you require. Well, you can regulate that. You and can I can put regulate the right amount in. I can use size of the pellets right. and dosage of the pellets right. to regulate how they release and how long it takes for them to release. So, so then and that's the art of it. That's the hard part. An on-demand reservoir. Right. So as my body needs it, it can reach down and get it. It's, right. If you be, always, if you become a, a marathoner tomorrow, right. I'm going to have to up, up your testosterone dosage. by right. hundreds of milligrams over a six month period well don't worry because that's not okay i know yeah. i know so that's not for me either yeah. that's okay some people are mar marathoners and some so, aren't i'm a mental marathoner okay well that's yeah. good that's what we need you for <laughs> <laughs> so for for men mm -hmm. testosterone is your main hormone women have estrogen as well we have receptors for it it's not nearly as simple as it sounds because you are genetically programmed right. to receive testosterone in a, in a certain way. You have receptor sites that receive testosterone and use them in a in a planned way that's planned by your genetics. Right. Now you can change that by heavy metals or pollution or things yeah. like that. But but there are environmental things that change that. But when I give testosterone to one person, and I give one dose, first they're going to metabolize it differently than the next guy that I give right. the exact same right. dose to. Right. And it's, and the, th I mean, everybody's going to be a little different. So that's why it's a little trial and error. You have to have somebody who knows how you are most probably using your testosterone. I always ask people if they're Northern European. Okay. Well, you check the genetic or Southern background, European. but you also do an extensive personal interview. You want yeah. to know about their lifestyle, the things they do, if they're marathoners or whatever, mm -hmm. to set a dosage that's going to be appropriate. Because there, there are arguments in the field about what the correct dosage of testosterone replacement should be. Mm -hmm. And the measurable issue that you go by is the amount of free testosterone. Right, and also, body. are they better? And, and symptomology. Because if someone's not better, if someone doesn't have a different kind of physique and they can't, they can't think it still, and mm -hmm. they don't have the ability to exercise, or they get tired after exercise, I ask them all those questions. Then I don't haven't given them enough testosterone because they metabolize it differently than somebody else. Somebody could have a fifteen hundred, and it wouldn't be enough right. of a total testosterone, and somebody else could have an 800 and it would be too be plenty, much or too much so essentially we need to change the way that people think about male testosterone this is not just uh gym rats who are trying to bulk up and and take we aren't doing that steroids. i don't do that no you don't that's not all. healthy and that's not what that is but that's what the mass media projects as testosterone in men that's mm -hmm. where people go when they think about it what we want you to be aware of is that it is a natural ingredient that's a required ingredient for healthy living and that as you age your body begins to make less and less of it and that accelerates the deterioration in the aging process so that you become more fragile and less functional and sick we want you to consider replacing your testosterone as you lose it so that you can stay healthy longer and and be functional longer mm -hmm. and the reason we sharing this health cast with you today is we want you to know there are some physical signs that you can notice your wife can notice your friends can notice and your doctor can notice to say hey let's talk about hormone replacement and testosterone replacement for men hopefully you'll have those conversations thank you thank you email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com you can find the biobalance health cast on itunes and on youtube for more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.